Hello everyone, this is Chetan Mehta from Skill Cubator Training Institute and this session is on Kanban principles, a very important concept for a business analyst, especially if you are working in a fast-paced environment. So let's get started and see what Kanban is. So agenda for today, we'll first start with the history of Kanban, then we'll understand what is Kanban with some very basic examples. Then we'll see the key elements of Kanban, which includes Kanban board, web limits, work in progress limits, and some key metrics which are commonly used. And then we'll see the benefits of Kanban. So let's first start with the history of Kanban. Kanban is a Japanese term which means billboard, signboard, or a signal board. The roots of this concept can be found in manufacturing world, more so in the automobile sector, Japanese automobile sector, Back in 1950s, these automobile makers were facing issues, issues like imbalance between the demand for their products and the system capacity. Now, system capacity is essentially the bandwidth of your production system to produce a given product, in this case, a car. Plus, they were also seeing a huge pile of inventory, be it raw materials, suits from multiple suppliers, or finished products, huge number of cars sitting in the lot ready to be sold. Now, this in turn led to huge inventory cost since they had to maintain physical facilities, hire manpower and other operating cost to maintain the inventory. Now, part of this would get damaged or destroyed, which in turn led to financial loss. Plus, the quality of products, the cars were also not that great. So the low quality cars or the low quality product resulted in either rework, which meant additional cost in time, or scrapping the product altogether. Now let's come to the human aspects of this problem. All this resulted in loss in productivity of a worker, low morale, resentment, low job satisfaction, things like that. So to solve this, Toyota created Kanban. So Kanban was aimed to address these inefficiencies in the assembly line. Now, as I said, Toyota came up with their own production system called TPS, Toyota Production System, which has many underlying concepts, management tools and techniques, but will focus on two of those, which are lean and just-in-time principles, which are very closely related to Kanban, which is part of TPS. Now, studies done by Toyota found that the production ecosystem was built on push system, which simply ignored the customer demand, and it failed to balance that demand with the production capacity, meaning the production system was only pushing raw materials to the assembly line, ignoring the demand of the customer as well as the capacity of the workers to produce a car. In essence, what should happen? If the demand is high, you need to scale up your inventory level to match the demand. Plus, you need to scale up your production capacity. Similarly, if the demand is low, you need to scale down your inventory level and scale down your production capacity as well. But that was not happening here. So hence, as part of TPS, Kanban introduced or Kanban was introduced to redesign this entire production system based on the pull system instead of push system and integrating these two principles of lean which means eliminate waste and JIT which is just in time make only what is needed when needed and in the amount needed these two concepts now, as of today Kanban is used in many sectors apart from assembly line environment in the manufacturing environment. It is also used in service industry, software development industry, uh, also in uh, like a personal day-to-day -day life, people use it to manage the work, right? Now let's see, or let's take some very common examples, some very basic examples and simulate this whole process. Now let's imagine we have a host and we have a guest. 
the host invites a guest for a pizza party and host has already ordered two large pizzas for the guest and then host starts serving the guest with couple of slices of pizza the guest is hungry and eats all of those and we have zero waste now again we have the host and guest host keeps continue to serve the guest with more and more slices of pizza but now the guest seems to slow down and we can see a bit of waste coming in right let's take the third pass we have the host and guest same scenario here the host doesn't stop host keeps pushing more and more pizza slices and dumps it on the guest plate now since the guest is full guest simply cannot eat more and either it goes back to the pizza box or in the trash right so we have got three scenarios here the first one where we have zero waste in the second one we can see a bit of waste and in third one we have got a great amount of waste well, let's analyze what happened and why it happened so here the host simply ignored the demand of the guest and filled the entire supply chain with excess capacity right those two pizza large pizza boxes right and this resulted in high cost maybe one large pizza was enough it also resulted in excess inventory same thing having two large pizzas instead of one waste access pizza slices which were dumped in the guest plate which cannot be put back in our pizza box but most likely it's going to go into trash right now if you use the same logic in a shop floor environment let's see what happens now here we have a scenario where a company is manufacturing its product for its customers and it gets all the parts the raw materials from the suppliers and stores it in its warehouse now similar to our pizza scenario this company is manufacturing the products based on its own capacity ignoring the demand that exists in the market and fails to sync up its production system capacity with the market demand resulting in unsold finished goods now here we can see it simply pushed the raw materials to the assembly line ignoring the demand of the customer as well as the capacity of the worker who is responsible to assemble it now as i said in an ideal scenario if the demand is high you scale up your inventory level scale up your production capacity if the demand is low you scale down your inventory level scale down your production capacity but that was not happening here now let's see all the issues that comes along with this now ignoring the customer demand will result in excess inventory of raw material as well as finished products unsold items that must be kept in the warehouse now that comes with a huge overhead cost it needs space manpower and other overheads like machinery to move things around power supply and other supporting overheads also anytime something is sitting in the inventory there is a cost component attached to it for example if a part has been sold from a supplier payment must be made to the supplier Similarly, if a finished product is sitting in the warehouse waiting for the customer, it is slowing down the cash inflow, meaning the company has already incurred the cost but is unable to realize the profit. Right now, any sitting inventory may also get damaged. So while moving things around, right, it can get damaged, resulting in a waste. Now let's see what happens when we ignore the workers' capacity. first of all it leads to imbalance in the assembly line so when you keep pushing work somewhere down the process it will create that imbalance first of all bottleneck things get choked at some point process starvation all the subsequent workstations will not have enough work or no work at all over allocation 
there might be some workstations that have excess work then what they can handle defects rework waste customer complaints meaning we have unhappy customers complaining returning products and all this will impact the customer loyalty product as well as company image so basically push system doesn't work it ignores the demand capacity and leads to all these issues like what we saw overhead cost defect work rework waste loss in productivity in short it's a bad practice now let's go back to our previous pizza example but with a slight different approach now we have those two same people here we have the host we have the guest but this time around host understand the demand for the pizza may not be an exact quantity but a good calculated guess and orders a pizza which meets the demand now the big shift in this approach is that the the instead of host pushing the pizza to the guest we are allowing the guest to take the pizza slices based on his or her appetite which is the demand meaning we are now shifting from a push system to a pull system and we can clearly see there is no wastage whatsoever there is no excess inventory and neither there is any left pizza in the plate right Now similarly, now the manufacturing is done based on the demand than the availability of the raw material. So we have factory, we have customer. Unlike the previous example where we were ignoring the customer demand, now we are building things or building the products based on the customer demand. So now the customer demand drives the production process and the inventory levels. workers on the assembly line pull the work based on how much needs to be produced that is a demand and when to produce that particular product based on the available capacity so we can see there is no excess inventory required there is no excess finished goods waiting in the lot plus the workers are pulling the work based on the available capacity and hence work also gets done right so this is more of a pull system where work is done based on the demand and capacity so as we see kanban is a pull system right built based on lean and jit just in time principles and it takes into account the demand and capacity of the resources finally we can visualize the work and it aims to balance the workflow meaning it tries to make sure that there's a continuous flow of work from one end to another end so these are the key elements of kanban now let's see in detail some of the more uh, advanced concepts of kanban So first is Kanban board. So Kanban board is a visual display of the work status in real time. Then we have the VIP limits. Then we'll see some metrics. Metrics mainly three metrics: lead time, cycle time, and cumulative flow diagram. So this is a Kanban board. As I said, it's a visual display of work status in real time. And here we can see a very simple example of Kanban board where we have three columns. to do in progress and done within each column we have cards kanban cards which indicates a work item now these cards move from one column to another column as things progresses 
but most important element is people pull these cards from the previous column or lane as per their available capacity right now let's see what is whip limits work in progress limits whip limit is maximum work items that are allowed in a given stream or column meaning you cannot take more than the whip limit that has been established for that particular column metrics let's see some metrics lead time lead time is a time from the moment when the request was made by the client customer and placed on the board to when all the work on this item is completed and the request was delivered back to the client so basically it's a total time the client is waiting for an item to be delivered then we have the cycle time the cycle time is the amount of time that the team spent actually working on this item on a work item without the time that the task spent waiting on the board therefore we can say that the cycle time should start being measured when the item task or that particular work item enters a working column only that's the time we need to consider when we are calculating cycle time not the time when it was waiting for someone to pick it and start working on it and then we have the cfd which is cumulative flow diagram it's a basically it's a graph that shows the status of work in real time which includes many other elements like backlog lead time cycle time whip limits plus we can also detect any of the bottlenecks in the flow Now let's see some of the benefits of Kanban. Now since the focus is to build your production capacity based on the demand, it helps to balance out the flow of work, hence resulting in a continuous flow, continuous work being delivered from one end to another end. So it aims to balance it out and tries to have a continuous flow of work across your work stream. Helps in improving the quality of work. If you remember, we talked about the whip limits. By putting the whip limits, we are ensuring that the work is pulled only when there is available capacity and hence it improves the quality of work, which means less waste and rework. Also helps in reducing the inventory cost, right? helps in boosting the productivity of the workers, of the employees working. So basically all these are the key benefits of Kanban. Now for more detailed discussion, you can please email me, call me. But that's all for today on Kanban. And for all your training needs, please contact us at 703-200-9921. You can also email us at info at skillcubator.com. Website is www.skillcubator.com. I hope you like this video. Please do like it, subscribe, share it. Thank you and I'll see you soon. Bye.